Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Surveying the world. State Affairs with Edmond Obilo is live. Knowledge is power, and there is power in books. At Odara Books, we sell books and disseminate knowledge. Buy books on www.odarabooks.com. Odara Books, out to stock your library and connect you to a new world of books. Ken Saruiwa died fighting for his people. I accuse the ethnic majority who run Nigeria of practicing genocide against the Ogoni people. I accuse the oil companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of encouraging genocide against the Ogoni people. I accuse Shell and Chevron of practicing racism against the Ogoni people because they do in Ogoni what they do not do in other parts of the world where they prospect for oil. The devastation of the Ogoni countryside, the complete destruction of the Ogoni ecosystem, the dehumanization of the Ogoni people, the denial to them of education and other health facilities and other social amenities, all these together have led the Ogoni down the way of extinction. I accuse the Nigerian government and the international, multinational companies which prospect for oil in Ogoni of genocide. I appeal to the international community, to the British government, the American government, the Japanese government, the countries of the European community who buy oil from Nigeria to come now to the aid of the Ogoni people and stop this genocide. Let's think about the words of the renowned scholar, Claude Akin. He said, They have risen above our slave culture of silence. They have found the courage to be free. And they have evolved a political consciousness which denies power to rogues, bullies, fools, and hypocrites. For better or for worse, Ogoni land holds our hope. Battered and bleeding, they struggle on to realize our hopes and to restore our dignity. If they falter, we die. Claude Akedar Oil was first found in Nigeria in 1956, then a British protectorate, by a joint operation between Royal Dutch Shell and British Petroleum. The two began production in 1958 and were soon joined by a host of other foreign companies in the 1960s after the country gained independence. Non-violent opposition to the oil companies by the Ogoni people in the early 1990s was as a result of the contamination of their land and lack of financial benefit from oil revenues. According to Ledo Miti, a former president of the Movement for the Survival of the Ogoni People, Masip, the trouble between the Ogonis and the oil companies started when, as a child, they were attracted by the sight of vehicles and some white men who had driven to their school compound. Their excitement soon turned into consternation when they were asked to lie down. Before long, they heard loud explosions on their football field. Shell started its operations in 1958 in Mitty's village. He says he is aware 
that Shell does not enter into negotiations with villages before commencing oil exploitative activities. He says the usually secure mining leases from the federal authorities without reference to the local communities. Armed with these leases, they enter the land, bulldoze crops, shrines, sacred places for which they pay compensation at ridiculously low rates determined by them. Meet it there. In October 1990, the Movement for the Survival of the Ogoni People presented the Ogoni Bill of Rights to the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The bill hoped to gain political and economic autonomy for the Ogoni people, leaving them in control of the natural resources of Ogoni land and to protect the environment from further land degradation. In recovering the money that has been stolen from us, I do not want any blood spilt, not of an Ogoni man, not of any strangers amongst us. We are going to demand our rights peacefully, non-violently, and we shall win. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush Radio. Bush, Bush, Bush. Bush Radio. Your Real Talk Radio. Your Real Talk Radio.